okay then uh, let's get started so uh, you guys may, might might be wondering like what goes into designing an aircraft so uh, here is a brief overview like uh, what how we start designing a aircraft so we first need some basic and general requirements uh, like kind of specifications of an aircraft then we do something which is called a feasibility study uh, then we come to some detailed requirements. Uh, then comes the design phases. Uh, notice the S, like it. Uh, th those are phases, okay. And then there's the design analysis and testing and certification, etc. Okay. So this is the brief overview, and now we'll uh, <clears throat> go into them in detail. So what are basic and general requirements? Oh, uh, I've just forgot to. Okay, someone started the recording. Good. Uh, basic and general requirements. So basic requirements include uh, like basic stuff about the aircraft. Like before you start designing, you need to know some basic stuff. Like what is it? Is it a fighter jet or is it a transport aircraft or is it a drone? So that like the class of the aircraft and some performance characteristics like uh, what do you want the range to be? Like how far it should go? Uh, what should be its top speed? Uh, when it comes to like commercial aircraft, uh, some things like what should be the uh, like take off it, like what amount of cargo it should be able to carry, uh, some things like that. Okay, uh, these are like uh, not fixed and are like slightly modified uh, after some uh, deliberation, and like these things also include some requirements for certification, like. Uh, if you are going to build a commercial aircraft, like there are some uh, standards that need to be met uh, by the whatever the aviation uh, authority of that country is. So uh, like basically <clears throat> what this is, is uh, consider that you are a big company and like you are uh, maybe uh, Indian Air Force uh, and you want to you want some you want a new fighter aircraft, for example. So you will. Uh, approach different com companies for their designs. So uh, these basics and general requirements are generally provided to you. The designer, uh, they are provided to you. And like they might be slightly modified afterwards. So uh, that's the basic requirements. And now what is the, what is this feasibility study we are talking about? So like before we just, uh, start uh, putting our time and effort into like doing the analysis, drawing, uh, like making up the CAD models, or like even just uh, manufacturing anything. Uh, it is like good that we first uh, like make sure that what our design we have uh, come up with it is actually uh, like feasible. Whatever the requirements are there, the, those are feasible. Like you cannot expect. Uh, like a Boeing 747 to go supersonic, right? So these are some uh, some factors we discussed during a feasibility study. So uh, like we need to assess if the basic requirements can be met with the current technology. Uh, then we, <clears throat> like uh, we one important aspect is uh, discussing whether the requirements can be met by traditional designs or we re require a radical new concept like. Uh, like uh, if you want a let's say a fighter aircraft and if you guys know the earlier fighter aircraft they like they were quite similar to the propeller driven aircrafts right like they look nothing like today's aircraft so those were the traditional designs at that time but later some radical new designs arrived like delta wing etc uh, let's not go into details uh, so these like, do we require such a new approach or like the traditional approaches are good enough? Uh, then what we do is we review and revise some basic requirements. Uh, the requirements which had we had uh, received from the company, we review them like with the company itself. Like we'll sit down and discuss like uh, some changes need to be made, etc. And then we produce a detailed set of requirements. And uh, another important aspect during this phase is the initial cost estimation. So this is very important because 
money is like money matters everywhere so it is very important for any company uh, like to do this initial cost estimation so this is kind like what i am telling you is kind of the professional approach and i think it is better that you guys be aware of these things so data requirements so you guys might be wondering we just di discussed some requirements so why do we need these so uh, the things we the requirements we said before were uh, very vague like so, uh, like they weren't very uh, defining things so they like these requirements will cover the major design uh, will uh, like they will influence the design of the aircraft so things like uh, the, like there are three things the performance requirements like uh, range so range is basically how far your aircraft can go on a full tank or full charged battery then the operating speed what is the top speed or cruise speed then the maneuverability like how fast it should be able to turn etc take off and landing uh, specification uh, these are like very important things uh, like if you want a uh, uh, aircraft that is carrier capable for example uh, you want aircraft should be able to launch from ins vikran uh, so like these you, you need to specify these things at these uh, at this level okay then there are some operational requirements like <clears throat> what is the like maximum size for example again coming back to the aircraft carrier uh, the planes are stored inside the air aircraft carrier right so you cannot have a ridiculously large uh, wingspan so there are some constraints also like for example civilian airports some airports uh, have some rest uh, restriction to the size of aircraft they can accommodate so these things uh, then there are the navigation and communication equipment uh, like capabilities like uh, radar for example so what should be the maximum range of the radar etc uh, then some like um, ai integration maybe this can also be specified then payload details like if it is a uh, let's, let's say passenger aircraft so like uh, what should what amount of baggage we can carry in one flight uh, then some crew details crew and passengers like again coming back to uh the like commercial aircraft what is the maximum number of people that can sit in the plane things like that okay then there are some general requirements like cost like uh, as i said uh, suppose you get a, a, re, a like design request from a company so they will specify that we want a aircraft that uh, that doesn't cost uh, more than some specified amount so that's one thing another thing is uh, airframe life uh, this is very important when it comes to like uh, real life uh, like pro the commercial things because uh, you know aircrafts are very expensive so uh, like a company we will want that the aircraft we have designed should last as long as it uh, as long as it can so these things are specified like uh, this is kind of an important aspect uh, air, air like the lifetime of the aircraft uh, yeah just i need a, a quick input from you guys am i going too fast uh, or something or if i am breaking in between uh, any one of you just just give me a like quick update about this no we are it's okay we are. okay 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 cool thanks uh, so, okay so next yeah so the first slide uh, some of you might recognize this aircraft it is one of the iconic aircrafts uh, it is the f14 agar uh, kis if someone has seen uh, top gun uh, then they probably are very familiar with this aircraft so here uh, like the us navy put out uh, some requirements and like this this was kind of something what uh, like grumman Gru aerospace, uh, Air aerospace uh, submitted to them so like this company basically designed the f14 so as uh, like as you can see there is the cost mentioned 38 million dollars propulsions are specified uh, thrust like what uh, what is the maximum thrust it can provide 
then lay, length, height, etc., takeoff weight, wingspan, speed. Uh, yeah, one important thing, ceiling, service ceiling. So what is service ceiling is uh, basically, as you know, as we go higher in the altitude, uh, the like air, uh, air density decreases, right? So you can imagine that the uh, lift produced by the wings will decrease. So like there will be a time after which the uh, like aircraft will not be able to uh, support itself in level flight. So that is what we call the service uh, service ceiling. So that is also uh, mentioned here. Uh, then speed, mission radius, etc., and like other stuff. If you are uh, interested in these things, you can search them online and you, you'll find it. Yeah, so uh, we discussed some things. Uh, before we have some fun, uh, let me just ask if, if there are any uh, doubts. Anyone, if something is not clear till now, uh, just raise your hand and ask. Okay, I'm assuming no one has any doubts. Okay, so yeah, so what you see is a silhouette of a plane. Uh, let's see if any one of you can identify. I hope there are some aerospace geeks among you guys. Uh, yeah, so can you identify the aircraft? Anyone? Blackbird? Uh, no. Come on, guys. Uh, just type in the chat box. F-15, you are close. Harsh. Okay, uh, let's not uh, waste too much time. So this is basically the F-14 itself. Uh, the same aircraft we were discussing before. Okay. Uh, F-24, F-16, F-22. Okay, okay. F-15 Eagle, no. Okay, so it is the F-14. Uh, good to see that some geeks are there. I'm not the only one. Okay, so yeah, now we move on to the real deal, the design phases. S, yeah. So what are the design phases? So this is basically the uh, process of designing an aircraft. A little complicated, agreed, but it is the most efficient way. So first we, like we, uh, chronologically speaking, we have the mission requirements now. We made the details requirements, the basic requirements, the general requirements. So now we have the basic requirements. Now what we do is we uh, start uh, designing some concepts. Like you guys must have heard about concept aircrafts or concept cars, right? So this is the conceptual uh, design phase. So we come up with some concepts and we like, uh, I'll just, uh, I'll go in uh, detail later. So after the conceptual, during the conceptual design, we do some computational uh, estimates about like what is the lift, etc. Then we move on to the preliminary design phase. So during, like after the preliminary design, uh, like we further refine the models we have uh, created before and we do some uh, like more de detailed uh, analysis. Like what are the things we analyze? I'll tell you later. So we do some detailed analysis and many a times it happens that uh, our design fails to meet some requirements or there is some flaw with our design. So we go back to the concept design phase again. So this is like a loop and it goes on quite a few times. Then after we think that we are fairly confident with our design, we move on to the de detailed design and construction phase. So now we, we are like sure that it is going to work. So now we start doing very like detailed uh, analysis. Uh, we start making CAD models, et cetera, et cetera. And if it uh, everything works out, we move on to constructing the prototypes. Okay. So uh, conceptual design. So as like naturally it uh, includes a lot of trial and error and one thing uh, i need i want to emphasize in this workshop is that uh, if you are a aircraft like if you want to 
like uh, go ahead with aircraft designing uh, one thing you need to understand is there is a you need to make a lot of compromising uh, compromises and trade offs so uh, like in a, uh, when it comes to aerodynamics uh, everything has a cost like virtually uh, almost everything has a cost uh, like you do something to uh, improve your design and it will uh, have some uh, negative in uh, influence as well so you need to balance these things like uh, the advantage something is giving you with uh, with the disadvantage it offers so this is uh, like i am stressing it again uh, this is something you need to be aware of uh, when it comes to designing okay so uh, concept uh, con like conceptual design phase will include some lift drag or mass estimates uh, wing layout some like engine requirements etc basic stability uh, like uh, um, you can see these things on the screen ha huh. so one important thing most of the analysis done here is theoretical uh, like you know um, like any of one of you who has used any like engineering uh, software before like solid works or fusion you know that it is uh, like time consuming right so to and conceptual design is like a rapid prototyping uh, phase like you quickly move on from one design to next so that is why to save time we do some basic uh, calculations using uh, some standard equations <clears throat> so let's now come to preliminary design so preliminary design now after conceptual design we have uh, let's say we have fixed the type of wing it needs to be uh, like let's say a delta wing for example i hope you guys know what is a delta wing if not we will come uh, i'll explain it later so we have uh, like decided this so now some major characteristics are frozen uh, what i mean is like they are fixed and uh, not changed like uh, no significant uh, changes are made some small changes are made obviously but they are uh, kind of frozen and now <clears throat> some more in depth analysis of performance is done like and also uh, things like landing gears etc are designed uh, these are not detailed designs like we won't go into a uh, solid works and start designing the landing gear uh, what we do is basically we decide what type of landing gear uh how many landing air it should require <clears throat> for example uh, most fighter jets have th uh, three right uh, two on the wings and one in on the nose but some civilian aircrafts are different uh, they have two on the wings but one on the tail and uh, th uh, like things like uh, airbus a380 these are like massive aircraft so they require more than uh, like more number of uh, landing gears so these things also we Uh, include during the preliminary design phase uh again important thing the analysis now uh, is done using computer simulation because we are uh, kind of confident about our conceptual design and hence we move to the preliminary phase so we now do some analysis using computer simulations and during uh, like uh, after doing this simulations uh, this is when most of the problems will arise you will see that it is not producing in a lift or it is not able
Hello guys, just wait for a few minutes. Vedant is facing some network issues. He'll join again. Yeah, just wait for a few minutes. Uh, okay, I'm out. Yes, there is some network issues. I'm audible. Yes, Vedant, you are audible. Camera ban kar ke rakh. Okay, I'll do that. Uh, yeah, let me share it again. Okay, so where did you guys lose me? Or? Is it a preliminary design? Like okay, uh, you uh, were talking about the landing gears. Okay, okay, sorry. Okay, sorry guys, uh, just bear with me. So yeah, so we do these things. And one important thing is we do analysis here using computer simulation. So uh like to uh like we are fairly confident with our model so we move uh use computers now to do some uh detailed uh simulations and uh at this after doing these simulations we will discover some problems like we are not able to uh, achieve the lift required or we are not able to uh <clears throat> reach the top speed required so we again go to the conceptual design and like these uh, this process uh repeats kind of so uh, like till like if any one of you uh, has worked with designing before you know that uh, when you ideate about anything uh, like you need to think about various things before you come up with something that is uh, good so that is why uh, this uh, phase like this process repeats a lot of times so after we think that okay everything is working well we move on to the next stage so uh, yeah, one thing I need to uh, discuss, like the design process up till this point was quite fle flexible. Like we uh, we do many changes and like it's okay to do changes. But uh, when we move on to the next phase, that is the de detailed design. Like <clears throat> majority of the things are fixed and they are not uh, changed. Okay, so detailed design right so like now as a different uh, different like we have made many different designs so what we do now is uh, let's say we uh, made some 10 designs of the aircraft like uh, 10 different approaches uh, one was let's say delta wing one was a conventional wing something like that okay so what we now do is we compare these things like we are uh, we have, uh, let's say, as I said, we have 10 different designs. Now we will uh, start comparing these. We will see like which is the uh, like best package, which 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 design uh, offers us the uh, most benefits. And then we move forward with that design. <clears throat> so what we now do is we will make the detailed CAD models because we are confident that this thing is going to work so we will do some uh, <clears throat> more thorough analysis of everything then we will uh, yeah so this phase also includes selection of like now we are starting to plan about constructing the aircraft as well okay so we will think about what material we are use, going to use like carbon composites or aluminium or titanium for example so these things we will start uh, taking into account. We will also do some cost and weight optimization. Uh, this thing, this thing is again important. Anything that has to do with money is important basically. So uh, we'll do some cost and weight optimization. We'll try to reduce the cost or we'll try to reduce the weight. And we will revise the performance calculations after thorough analysis because like earlier we did a kind of a preliminary analysis, right? So we got some results, but we are not sure about them. So we will uh, <clears throat> like do a thorough analysis and we'll make sure that what we are uh, kind of advertising, that thing can be met. OK, and a lot of data is generated uh, during this phase to verify the assumptions we made uh, typo. So we will do a uh, generate data and we will do some analysis of the data and make some changes. And now also the subsystems are developed like 
uh like how do we control the aircraft there are many subsystems like there is communication system there is the control system like hydraulics etc so these things are also now slowly started to develop and <clears throat> like we focus on creating uh, so, uh something that is ready to be produced so we have done everything perfectly till now we have uh, done lot of uh, testing we have done a lot of simulations and we are now confident that this thing might work so we will go ahead and uh, make of make our uh, like a first prototype like we we will <clears throat> validate our hardware requirements etc like if we have the correct communication systems if uh, the hydraulic things are working properly etc we will validate these things and we'll make our prototype so uh, testing includes two phases first is the ground testing uh, so why why is this ground testing done uh, very important thing uh, air, aircrafts are expensive so uh, we just we don't just uh, start flying with it because we do and because the aircraft is not tested yet so we don't know if it will fly if it will fly properly and like there's also a risk of a human life the test pilot might get injured etc so that is why ground testing is important we like uh, we do some wind tunnel, uh, tunnel testing of the full scale model we will test about the re reliability of propulsion like if any one of you has uh, seen any uh, program on discovery or uh, any other channel uh, you might have seen that engines are tested uh, for uh, lo long durations like uh, they will be running at maximum rpm for 7 hours 8 hours to test the reliability of those things so these things are included in ground testing next we move on to the flight testing so everything till now has worked properly uh, like uh, everything is reliable everything is working great so now we will do our first flight test so this is done to verify the actual performance of the aircraft like as you know everything that goes on to paper is not uh, realized in real life right so that is why we do some actual testing and check for performance and flight characteristics etc we also check the communicational capabilities like uh, <clears throat> does the radar work properly what is the range etc and after this testing some minor changes may be made like you might realize that the <clears throat> engines are uh, underpowered so you will like again go to design uh, like selecting some newer engines that are more powerful things like that okay and then when we are sure that everything is uh, a okay we will move on to the certification phase so any aircraft that is uh, like any commercial aircraft needs to be certified by the uh, like authorities right so for this we need to like they have some separate test uh, tests they do and after that we require uh, get a certificate that a so and so aircraft designed by so and so company is uh, okay to fly and only then we can start like commercially selling uh, the aircraft so you guys might be wondering that why is it talking so much about industry why is it talking so much uh, like in a professional sense so that uh, i am talking like that be, uh, because <clears throat> see uh, what like these things are kind of tedious i know but they are uh, designed and they are used because they are very efficient and if any one of you is interested in pursuing career in uh, aircraft design then i think it is like you should know about these things uh, beforehand like it will help you so that is the reason i have included these things as well okay so any doubts till now anyone okay let's have some fun again so identify the aircraft this is fairly easy i guess most of you will identify it yes anyone
Okay. So there has answered it correctly is the F-117. Uh, one of the earliest successful stealth aircrafts that had been designed. Okay, cool. So let's come to like we talked in like how things happen in the industry versus how things happen in the club. So <clears throat> basically we are not trying to sell anything. So our approach will be a little different. And also we don't work on expensive full scale aircrafts. We work on small drones. So uh, some things I, need, I want to tell you guys. So aircraft design is a relatively new thing in the club. Like uh, <clears throat> we uh, we haven't paid uh, like before this, there hasn't been paid much attention towards uh, actual designing of aircraft. So uh, like the like the people who have experience in this are relatively few, and uh, they also have like limited experience in this thing. So, and like we are uh, <clears throat> we are in a process of learning new things and that is the reason like i want uh, like these uh, session uh, these series of workshops are organized so that you guys have the uh, like proper knowledge and exposure you need uh, when it comes to designing because uh, like when it when it was our time like uh, no one took such session about aircraft design okay so we did all of these things by ourselves so like we want to ensure that uh, you guys have some support from the team and that is why we are organizing this series. Okay, uh, so next, how do we work in the club? So since we focus on UAVs, uh, like our process is slightly different. Conceptual and pre preliminary design we do is done mainly using open source software, which are uh, mentioned open VSP and XLFR5. That's a mouthful, I know, but it is a uh, like very nice software. Uh, we'll have some demonstration and some information about these later. OK, so we use these two softwares during the conceptual and preliminary design. Why? Because they are very easy to use and like uh, you, you get quick results. Uh, but the thing about quick results is they are not very reliable and uh, exact okay these are approximates uh, approximates uh, we get so then detailed design uh, we do using solidworks or fusion like proper the uh, cad modeling we do using solidworks or fusion and ansys is used for analysis during the detailed phase okay uh, ansys is very hard i'll like I won't lie to you, it is difficult, but like if you learn it, uh, it has a very good professional scope. Like if you have it mentioned in your CV, like I know how to use ANSYS Fluent or ANSYS Structural, it will uh, add a lot of weight to your CV. Okay, so it's good to learn ANSYS. And I think civil uh, and I think also mechanical had ANSYS in their course. Uh, Harsh. Uh, civil hard uh, still mechanical didn't have anything in their course, but there are people who are doing it right now. OK, OK, so <laughs> like quite surprising, but uh, like, you know, like these things will obviously help you. Like even if you uh, those who are interested in research, like if you uh, want to work under some professor on an aircraft design, like there are people who are working, like I know few MTech people who are working on UAV design under some professor for their MTP. Okay. <clears throat> so knowing these things are going to help you. So uh, one thing I want to uh, talk about is that it's not necessary that you need to be from a mechanical or civil background. Uh, to be good with these things like if I talk about myself, I am from engineering physics, so absolutely no relation with uh, these things. But since I have interest in this thing, I am currently pursuing this thing. So don't think that I am from cabin color, I am from biosciences, so I can't do it. If you put enough effort and we are there to guide you, you can uh, like you can achieve anything. OK. So like don't feel that I am from a different branch, so I won't be able uh, you know, uh, perform at par with other people. So don't think like that. 
so <clears throat> yeah aircraft design requires some basic knowledge of aerodynamics uh, like we don't want you to be like very thorough with this but some basic things you need to know like what is drag what is lift how it works how does an aircraft actually fly so these things you need to know okay so <clears throat> just like we will have some sessions on this also will uh, slowly introduce uh, you to these things okay so since we don't have an aeronautical branch as i said before we rely on online sources okay ha huh. so, so as i said it is not necessary to know aerodynamics like everyone does not need to know it uh, like if you are let's say from ec or triple e uh, you can work on communication system like you can design some embedded systems which can help with communication like uh, there is an ongoing project which will be made open to you guys soon uh, that re actually requires people who can work on electronics okay and then uh, some people might not be interested in aerodynamics but they know how to use solid works or fusion so you can help with designing the uh, stuff like designing a landing gear for example and you can also help with structural designing and some structural analysis because we don't want a plane that like whose wing just snap up in there so that is like that is an important aspect as important as aerodynamics okay so like air, uh, like aircraft designing is a uh, is something that uh, that covers like that can uh, include a lot of people from different backgrounds okay so don't feel like uh, I, I, like it's all about aerodynamics okay it's not so we have like i know it is getting quite repetitive reaper like you guys might be thinking they talk about only this thing but that is because this was our first attempt uh at designing an aircraft and because of the pandemic we didn't get any more chances so i'll just this will be brief i know i have talked about it before so in brief so this is the conceptual phase so we are taking help from test books because at that time we didn't know anything about aircraft designing we were just we had a textbook and we started working on it so if you can uh see here uh, there's a page which contains a lot of uh, theoretical estimates and a lot of like you can see a sketch of uh, the aircraft and here is abu bhaiya uh, abu bhaiya like he is uh, before like he kind of is the was the mentor for me when it comes to aircrafts uh, so very nice guy and i'm thankful to him so this is kind of the conceptual or preliminary design then on the right you can see is <clears throat> kind of the detailed design so one thing to notice uh, in club is that we have to work with form sheets and so we have to worry about how we will going to fabricate it so you can see that uh, like if you see see here the fuselage part it is uh, designed in such a way that it is cut out from a single flat sheet of foam so these things are also something we need to take into account when we work in the club and it is quite a lot of fun because it's like a puzzle you need to like figure out how you can flatten a 3d shape right so it is fun then this was our first prototype uh, took a lot of effort and this was our first prototype after our flight test so flight test as i said flight test in uh, like the flight test we talked before the industrial approach and our approach was miles apart we just made something and took it to fly without testing it properly so uh, this was the result and it is quite fun hard breaking at times but it is fun and we got to know a lot specifically we realized that the tail we had designed this thing was basically useless when it comes to low speeds so we had to design a bigger tail so again let's have some fun this is coming becoming a trend i know but let's take some break from all the technicalities okay i think you guys know this one i hope you guys know 
if you know the but then you know this thing okay uh sai has answered it correctly the a10 thunderbolt most iconic uh, aircraft one of the most iconic aircraft i am a fan of that aircraft to be honest and <clears throat> if you haven't like in case you haven't just google on youtube or like on youtube just type a10 bolt b r r t and i think you will love the thing uh, the sound okay okay so we discussed the design phase till now now if anyone has doubts uh, now is the time to ask because now we'll going we're going into uh, the like the designing parts of as a um, part any doubts anything that i was too quick with or anything like that anyone okay so let's move a uh, familiar image if any one of you got the wing seat in uh, during your flights very familiar thing and it looks quite complex but after we finish with this thing you will be able to identify everything okay so this is basically the anatomy of an aircraft a lot of things okay so uh, like we are not discussing the like control part like the hydraulics or the cockpit or anything like that we will be discussing the like major aerodynamic like structural and aerodynamic uh, things so you can see these things a lot of them and we will discuss about them, them now so let's start with the obvious the engines so engines are required to provide the thrust and like they will cancel the drag that is produced due to air resistance and will keep the aircraft flying and there are various types of engine like we we, we won't go into this uh, detail if you are interested go on google or wikipedia you'll find a lot of information about various type of engines then the fuselage so uh this thing the entire thing the place where you sit in your uh flight that is the fuselage so it includes the cockpit uh, like the entire this thing that is the fuselage so it provides structure to the plane important because the wings are attached to the fuselage sometimes even the engines are attached to the fuselage okay and it is uh responsible for majority of the total drag right it is an emesis of and a nightmare of aerodynamics and like people who design the aircraft because there is there needs to be done a lot of optimization because like if you, if you are designing a commercial aircraft let's say boeing 747 so you want the <clears throat> fuselage to be as streamlined as possible but at the same time you need to have space for everything like fuel the bag okay, like baggage the people the electronics etc etc so like fuse like it also requ this requires a lot of optimization then there are the landing gears i don't think i have to explain them okay, so now we come to the wing so the wing basically generates the lift that is required to keep the aircraft flying and there are various configurations so there is the low wing there is the high wing the mid wing the dihedral the gull wing the inverted gull like uh, we won't discuss uh, like these in detail but i am just introducing them like uh, if if i remember correctly uh, during your orientation i uh, there was a question asked in the ppt uh, like what is the <coughs> advant like which is the most stable among the three uh, low wing high wing and mid wing and i think some of you had answered it so like these are the types of configurations and each have their advantage or disadvantage then there is like this was the 
important view this is the top view what is the shape of the wing is it rectangular is it elliptical or maybe it is a swift wing like of a fighter aircraft maybe it is a delta wing so the i talked about delta wing a lot so this is basically what it looks like okay so like like we choose the uh, type or shape uh, according to the requirements we have the mpnh so new term for most of you i guess so this is basically the tail of the aircraft and consists of the horizontal stabilizer the vertical stabilizer elevator and rudder big terms i'll get to them soon so again there are different types like there is the conventional tail which you see on uh, your like jets or uh, like on airports then there is the t tail then v tail like uh, reaper was a v tail aircraft then there is boom tail uh, like some of the aircraft during world war 2 had these bombers okay then there is the twin tail so there are different configurations each have again their advantages and disadvantages so stabilizers what are stabilizers so there are two stabilizers namely the horizontal and vertical stabilizer and they pro, uh, they provide stability during level flight so <clears throat> basically what will happen is if you just keep a wing on a uh, on the fuselage uh, the thing won't fly straight it will start rotating like if you uh, if you have ever done this uh, just take a flat piece of uh, like a flat leaf and just uh, drop it you might notice that it starts uh, rotating it starts flipping so these things are there to pro uh, prevent that and they also they may support the elevator and rudder so what are elevator and rudder i'll come to the i like most of you know but i will again come to it and sometimes the like horizontal and vertical stabilizer act as a elevator or rudder themselves okay so important thing uh, this entire thing is not the like this entire thing is not the vertical stabilizer okay only this fixed part that is the vertical stabilizer the moving part that is actually the rudder okay so the fixed part is actually the stabilizer here again this fixed part is the horizontal stabilizer so stabilizer right um, in most fighter aircraft you will see these things like uh, if you, uh in a commercial aircraft you'll see that uh, there is a fixed part of uh, horizontal stabilizer and at the end there is some movable part but uh, in some fight, uh, most fighter aircraft the entire uh, surface is movable this is done mainly to achieve uh, like uh, rotation rotational capabilities okay and again uh, one thing you should know that fighters aircrafts are designed specifically to be unstable okay so then we come to the control surfaces so the elevator and the rudder these are parts of the control surfaces they are responsible for changing the orientation of the aircraft in three dimensional space okay so in flight these surfaces will produce some aerodynamic force and these force uh are like applied at something called a center of pressure so uh, let, uh let's talk about center of pressure uh you guys know that of any object we can uh, like locate a center of gravity like we can assume that all the gravitational force is being <clears throat> applied at the center of gravity similarly when it comes to uh, lift <clears throat> uh we can assume that all of the lift is being provided uh, applied at a single point and that point is called the center of pressure okay like uh, we can uh, like we can draw uh, like we can like similar to the gravity uh, center of gravity that is a fixed point there is something called a center of pressure which is a fixed point from where we can apply uh, we can like um, we can 
consider that all of force all of the uh, lift is being applied so that is something called center of pressure so uh, the force is being applied at center of pressure and center of pressure might be different from the center of gravity so naturally there will be some torque produced okay there will be a moment arm remember your uh, mechanics class of first semester of first semester so the uh, mo moment will be produced and torque will be applied so the entire aircraft will rotate about the center of mass okay so this is how control surfaces work so elevators will produce pitching moment rudders will produce yawing moment and ailerons will produce rolling moment uh, these are new words i guess to some of you so i will talk about them what is exactly it is and sometimes uh, you may not need all three of them sometimes it like you can achieve uh, pitching and yawing moment using uh, by combining elevators and rudders something which is called rudder waiter so like these are uh, new things uh, people come up with so let's discuss what is uh, what are the different moment okay different uh, these things moments so pitching moment so pitching moment is basically when the aircraft will uh, rotate about the lateral axis so when you pitch an aircraft its nose will go up or down okay then there is the yaw moment okay so what is the yaw moment yaw moment will be produced along uh, like the aircraft will produce uh, rotate along the vertical axis so basically when uh, like you can consider that you are sitting in the cockpit of the aircraft and when you uh, yaw your uh, sorry, sorry when you yaw your aircraft basically the aircraft will uh, turn like like a car does you can like visualize something like that so that is the yaw like this th this thing it's rotating from top view okay and then there is the <coughs> roll so roll is uh, during a roll the aircraft will rotate around the longitudinal axis so basically the left or uh, like the left wing might go up and the right wing might come down so that is the roll okay so this is the again this is the sorry uh, this is the pitch this is the roll and this is the yaw okay so uh, as you can see uh, here i hope the point pointer is visible so we deflected this surface and like some air air is flowing like this along the uh, fuselage right so air is coming like this so this thing is obstructing the flow of air so some pressure will be exerted here and the center of mass is uh like somewhere here at the middle of the, uh, in the center of the wing whole wing you can consider so there is some unbalanced force produced so the aircraft will yaw so this is how control surfaces work then there are something called the trim tabs so trim tabs are small surfaces which are connected to the trailing edge of large control surface so they are present at the uh, like the end of uh, rudder elevator and ailerons they are used to control the trim okay so what is the trim i will talk about it so as you can see there is this aileron trim rudder trim and pitch trim so what trim does is uh, like if you uh, if any one of you has flown a, a remote controlled plane before <coughs> so you know that uh, the plane is designed to be stable right so if you uh, like pitch the aircraft up its most probable tendency will be to return new to a neutral position because force is being applied to the elevator right and it will try to bring the aircraft back in its original position so <clears throat> there might be times when you want the aircraft to be uh, like in level flight due to some problem uh, you might realize that it's not going in a straight line although my sticks are in uh, neutral position like i haven't i'm not ordering the aircraft to go up or down but it's going by itself so that time you will pitch, uh, adjust the trim so what this does is uh, see 
you can see the image there is this trim, trim tab what it does is it's uh, rotated in direction opposite to what you want the elevator to go so it is uh, rotated like this so now again airflow is going like this so it will produce some force here okay on the trim tab and that uh, force will in turn rotate the elevator and now elevator is also receiving some force so like some force is being applied like this some force is being applied like this so there will be a time when both of them cancel out and the uh, <coughs> like the plane is trimmed so what will happen now is that without uh, applying any con like without ordering the plane to go up or down it will uh, it will naturally go up or down okay so that is what is we call as a trim it is done like as i said before it is done to ensure that the aircraft is flying in a level flight yeah so now we come to high lift devices so basically as the name suggests these devices help to increase the lift of the aircraft so uh, just give me give me a moment yeah uh, <clears throat> yeah again uh, does anyone have any doubts uh, i guess not okay so high lift devices will increase the lift generated by the wing and reduce something which is called a stall speed so uh, you know that uh, aircraft like aircraft uh, when the aircraft flies it has to maintain some speed minimum speed right like during the uh, takeoff like the aircraft accelerates and you might notice that after some speed the aircraft starts flying so that speed after which the aircraft uh, like is able to support it its own weight it's called the stall speed if your air speed drops below the stall speed the wings will not produce enough lift to uh, balance the weight of the aircraft okay so flaps will increase the lift generated and they will reduce the stall speed there are they are very effective during takeoff and landing and you can see see actually see them if you see out of the window of uh, during your flight okay they are located on the trailing edge so these are uh, the flaps they are located near the uh, trailing edge so basically uh, this forward part is the leading edge of the uh, wing and this is the trailing edge so they are located near the trailing edge of the aircraft and they are situated near something called the root of the wing so what is the root of the wing the part where it is attached to the body of the aircraft that is called the root and this part the furthermost part is called the tip so like as i said before like there are trade offs everywhere there is there has to be made a compromise you don't get anything for free so you have increased the lift you have reduced the stall speed but you have also increased the increased the da drag produced so now you need more engine power to fly at that speed to overcome the drag of the aircraft uh, the air resistance okay so the, uh, like these are some uh, advantages and disadvantages of the flaps they uh, so one important thing when you use flaps uh, the lift and the weight um, couple from again reference to mechanics class they <clears throat> shift okay so if you can see the image you can see that the center of gravity is uh, marked by this uh, omnitrix like sh shape okay so <clears throat> that is the center of gravity sorry center center of gravity okay so the aircraft needs to be balanced along the center of gravity okay so we will assume that the lift is being produced at the center of gravity and the aircraft is flying straight what we what happens when you uh, like use flaps is that the center of pressure like which i talked about previously it's actually shifts backward like towards the trailing edge so now you can see that <clears throat> there is a unbalanced force uh, around <clears throat> like 
there is an unbalanced force around the center of mass so what will happen now is that it will produce a torque and the uh, like the plane will start to nose down so this is something which happens when you use flaps so you need to apply some elevator to counteract that force so there are different types of flaps again this is like a basic airfoil then there is the plane flap so what is a plane flap is that uh, the part of the wing will uh, the latter part of the wing it will like rotate about a hinge then there is a split flap then there is slotted flap fowler flap slotted fowler flap so these are different types again they have their advantages and disadvantages but we won't go into detail right now then there are Pritan, more devices yeah Pritan, someone just requested to go go a little bit slower okay okay uh, okay okay uh, which part do you do you want me to repeat anything uh yeah. Josh, uh, so, uh what like can you the previous two slides okay okay i'll i'll go over them again uh so you want me to explain trim types yes okay okay so uh do you, did you understand what is trim mm. okay so what uh like see this is our elevator okay this part which is highlighted and that is our the other part is the trim tab so what we did is initially the elevator was straight like this horizontal exactly what we did was we uh, rotated the trim tab upward so you can imagine like it is free to uh, rotate about this point so you can imagine some force is applied on the trim tab okay so what it will do is it will push the elevator down because the elevator can rotate about this point the trim tab is fixed in this position so now what happened is the elevator ro uh, like it rotated downwards we <clears throat> move the trim tab upwards it is a little confusing but if you understand like um, some physics you can um, it's clear quite clear so force is applied here it rotates like this now what happens is that the elevator will elevator is rotating like this but like similar to the trim tab it is also experiencing some force here because uh, air is moving like this so what will happen is the elevator also experience some force and like the the force on the elevator will try to move it upwards the trim tab will try to move it downwards so there will be a point where both of uh, both the forces are neutralized and now the uh, the elevator is in downward mode like uh, slightly downward so what this does like it will change the rotation or the pitch of the aircraft so did you understand it like now? we are controlling the elevator right and uh, the airflow will be controlling the trim tab no no uh, see what we did is that uh, see what is happening uh, let's say the aircraft uh, without doing anything the aircraft is trying to go up okay yeah Okay. So what we did is we turned the trim tab up, and in turn it turned the elevator down. Okay, okay. So now the aircraft will, uh, like the tendency of the aircraft to go up will be cancelled. Uh, like, are you able to understand? Mm, sort of. Like, it's not very clear. Uh, I'll. Okay, okay. I'll... Uh, I'll, I'll explain once in uh, like in brief. See, we are flying the aircraft. Aircraft mm -hmm. without we uh, like we are not doing anything, but aircraft is move, uh, pitching up. Like the nose is going up. Okay. And we don't want that, like it, suppose we want to fl we are flying for one hour. Uh, it's a, fl a flight uh, of one hour. So we don't want that the pilot don't, doesn't want to hold the stick uh, like forward. For one hour, right? Yes. Yeah, yes. So what we will do is he will uh, use the trim tab now. So what? It's like, uh, did you understand the part where the elevator goes down? I mean, uh, what will the trim tab control exactly? Uh, trim. See, 
Ele- we can control the elevator and we can also control the trim tab. Yeah, means uh, if we if we change the position of trim tab, what will affect? Uh, uh, in see in this case, what will happen is the elevator will go down and the uh, play and the nose of the aircraft will go down because of that. See what we did is we could use the elevator to do, uh, do the same thing instead of the trim tab, but then we would have to hold the like we will have to constantly keep the elevator in that position. The pilot will get tired, no, because he also experiences some force. So mm-hmm. to avoid that, let's say you have a knob on trim tab, you decide that I uh, like you rotate the knob once. Uh, the trim tab is set to let's say five degrees. And now the elevator has rotated by five degrees and it remains there without me doing anything. So the okay. tendency of the aircraft to go up is naturally cancelled. Okay. 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 Uh, okay. So now flaps. Uh, so I'll again go. Flaps increase the lift. They reduce the stall speed. Uh, you don't really need to know stall speed. I explained before. So stall speed is the minimum speed at which the uh, like the wings produce enough lift to counteract the uh, gravity okay they are used mostly during takeoff and landing they are located on the trailing edge you understood the trailing edge and the leading edge concept uh, i hope you have then they i talked about root and tip of the wing so this is the root near the body tip is further away from the body then they increase the drag produced. Why I uh, that requires some uh, like some knowledge of aerodynamics, so I won't discuss that now. Then the, this part, which includes that this uh, nose down attitude, by uh, because of the flaps, uh, <clears throat> like you don't need to understand that very well. Okay, it's not like at this level we don't expect you to. But what basically happens is after uh, using or like switching on kind of the flaps, the cent- uh, the lift, the po- uh, the center of pressure which I talked before, where uh, you can assume the uh, entire lift being applied, that moves backward. So this produced produces an unbalanced force and thus the plane will pitch down. Uh, if you got this good, if not, don't worry. Uh, like it's okay if you didn't get it. So there are more high lift devices. These are called slots or uh, slats. Both are slightly different, but consider them to be the same right now. These are located on the le- leading edge of the wing, and they help in maintaining the air uh, streamlined info. So you can see this wing, uh, this air uh, wing. Okay, this is a cross section of the wing. <clears throat> so you can see that. Uh, the like the wing is not what we expect it to be. Okay, let's say we are t- trying to uh, increase our alt- uh, alti- altitude. So the plane, uh, you can imagine the plane to be oriented some some uh, something like the this cross section. So we are going to, uh, trying to go up, but at the same time we have some relative velocity initially, which like this, no. Because we were initially going in the straight line, now we are going up. So we'll have some initial uh, relative velocity like this. So what happens is that after uh, after a specific point, if you angle this uh, wing too much, uh, you can see the airflow is disturbed, right? You can see this turbulence of sorts. Like it is turbulence, but you can see, right? Like it's not streamlined what we expect expect from the uh, wing so because of this what happens is the drag increases dramatically and also what happens is the uh, the amount of lift the wing is able to produce it reduces dramatically so uh, <clears throat> like if anyone of you have experienced this like in flight uh, there will be a warning from a from the um, pilot like uh, we are going to encounter some turbulence so like get yourselves buckled up and you notice that the airplane starts dropping down suddenly so that is basically um, something like this only suddenly the uh, like the <clears throat> amount of lift produced has reduced and we don't want that right 
so what uh, happens in such situations when the plane is like the wing is uh, angled in in a like extreme fashion relative to the flow of air we deploy the slot so what slot does is uh, you can see that there is some gap between the actual wing and that the protruding part that is actually the uh, slot slat so what happens is that some air will go uh, some uh, air will go under the slot this part but above the wing so what happens is that this this situation does not arise the <clears throat> as you can see the air is moving streamlined again so like both of them are in similar situation but this thing is able to now able to produce <clears throat> uh, enough lift okay so this is why we uh, use the slots uh, i hope i'm okay vedant you got muted uh, yeah yeah i i did it uh, okay <clears throat> so these are different types see uh, we like i am only introducing this concepts to you okay if you are really interested you can uh, go online and like study in detail about these things because if if i go into the de details we'll get late see uh, like we are already running late so i'll have to hurry up okay then there are the spoilers or the speed brakes so like spoilers rings a bell from cars cars have spoilers right so <clears throat> they are slightly different so what have they are located again they are, they are located somewhere and they reduce the lift generated and significantly increase the drag so you can uh, like when moving in air the air, aircraft does not have a brake like a car like you can uh, in a car you can put on the brakes on like you put some resistance to the wheel and the car slows down but what do you do in air so that time we use these things these are called the air brakes this will uh, increase the drag of the aircraft and what happens because of that the uh, the drag increases and <clears throat> the aircraft will slow down they will also reduce the lift so when do you think this uh, this thing might be uh, helpful when when do you think that we need to actually reduce the lift anyone unmute yourself and just answer Guys, anyone? While landing? Yeah, correct. So while landing, like after we have landed on the uh, runway, we don't want that the aircraft should again go up, right? So th at that time, we want we actually want the lift to reduce. So that is that time we will deploy the spoilers. Okay. So uh, they are also used in roll. Uh, I won't discuss that now since we are running late. So they will reduce the air speed when required. uh so that is this is the spoiler the top one is the spoiler and the bottom one is actually the speed brake the uh, speed brakes are slightly different from like uh, spoilers but and they are mostly used in fighter aircraft okay so winglets uh, these are another things uh, like another thing that is quite useful so uh, this is something i want you guys to understand okay see uh, you <clears throat> like when a uh, air flows over the wings of the aircraft uh, just know that a low pressure create is created above the wing and a high pressure create uh, area is created below the wing so from your like 10th class you probably know the land bridge sea bridge stuff right so air moves from high pressure to low pressure so you can see that air is trying to go like this it is trying to rotate so this this produce as something which is called a vortex similar to what you see in when you flush something like that so this is a vortex okay <clears throat> so what this uh, like it looks very uh, like it looks very petty thing but it uh, it contributes a lot to the drag of the aircraft because see aircraft is uh, the air is going like this right 
so it is gaining some kinetic energy it is gaining some momentum where do you think this uh, energy is coming from it's coming from the aircraft itself the energy of the aircraft so the aircraft is lo losing its kinetic energy in form of this vortex so we want to reduce these things so as you can see this is a normal wing and you can see a lot of vortex large vortex is produced and these are this this curved shape you see uh, most of you who travel by indigo or spice jet you know you have seen these things when you uh, when you get the window seat uh, like it's purple colored okay so this is this is the wing tip uh, winglet okay so you can see that after using winglet the size of the vortex has reduced significantly so they help in reducing the drag generated okay so we discussed many uh, <clears throat> devices till now again uh, if does anyone have any doubt with anything just let me know uh, we want this workshop like i don't want like we want that after this workshop you guys know about these things uh, okay i am assuming that you have understood everything so now can you spot the things we discussed before for those interested this is the sap gripper fighter jet uh, <clears throat> so can you spot the things uh, just type in the uh, chat box what are the things you can see like we discussed elevator rudders vertical stabilizer horizontal stabilizer then flaps uh, ailerons etc so just quickly in the chat type what you can see what you are able to figure out like guys this is a interactive session so that you understand better so just mm, quickly okay uh vertical stabilizers are visible yes yes then can you spot any high lift devices guys elevator is yes elevator is also visible so actually uh, this is a uh, different configuration so this thing uh, like technically it is not called a elevator it is called a canard okay elevator is like you must be thinking that these things are generally at the back of the aircraft why is it in the front of the aircraft so like it is a different design and it is uh, like it acts same as the elevator but it is called a canard uh, rafal has canards as well uh, can you spot uh, like i some of you must be able to spot uh, high lift devices i'm pretty confident about that just try to remember where i told high lift devices are there never mind uh, we don't we don't have much time left so basically these are canards you can kind of call them elevators so this is the canard it does not have a horizontal stabilizer like i told you before that some fighter most of the fighter aircraft don't actually have a horizontal stabilizer so this is a uh, you can call the elevator um, elevator it actually has uh, it does have a vertical stabilizer this is the rudder these these things uh, let me go back so these this the outer uh, you can see some lines right the outer part is actually the aileron the, and the inner part is actually the flap so these these things do have flaps and uh, this part is the um, like slides and slots okay so you can see that like it is flying but uh, at even at uh, this speed it is having some angle you can see this slight shadow that means that the, these are actually uh, partially being used okay again uh, can you spot now now it must be fairly obvious uh, what are the things you can see chat box quickly Let's skip the rudder, etc. Can you spot the uh, flaps, slots, and another interesting thing? Because it is, the plane is landing, something obvious. One of you just told about it. Anyone? Uh, 
uh, okay anyways so see these things these things the back the, these are at the back of the aircraft on like the back of the wing these are the flaps these things you can see they are kind like there's a gap right so these are actually the flaps of oh, sorry the slats that have been deployed and these things these are the actually the spoilers these things on the top of the wing you can see some something protruding out that is actually the uh, spoiler okay so i have a few videos that i uh, had but uh, let, let's not go there because it's getting late so you can see that uh, like this this was the video during takeoff you can see that uh, let me see yeah so uh, you can see that uh, these flaps are now deployed. Uh, th the flaps are deployed because we want to take off and flaps will provide additional lift. So we'll be able to take off earlier. So these are actually the flaps. You can see uh, like they are being used. And see, we were taking off the, see the uh, difference in the wing. We are taking off right now. So the flaps are deployed. Now we are in the level flight. You can see the wing looks different because the flaps are now retracted. See, the flaps are out. The flaps are now in because, as I said, flaps produce uh, flaps produce drag, and we don't require that right now because we are trying to save fuel. Now this is something during landing, the right one. So these are the spoilers. So the uh, aircraft is uh, going to land, so it needs to reduce its speed because it lands at around 350 kilometers or so. And uh, when you are cool, uh, in the air up high, it goes at 700, 800 kilometers. So spoilers are used. The aircraft speed reduces. Uh, now it is somewhere comfortable, let's say 400 kilometers. And now it is trying to land. So you can see the uh, <clears throat> flaps are again deployed. Because as I said, we want that the we are moving now slowly so we want that the uh, wing should produce enough uh, lift so we are going to land and um, yeah so now we have touched down and you can see the spoilers are activated so next time you are going uh, <clears throat> like when you go to guwahati i hope we get that chance soon uh, try to spot, uh, like, just try to observe how the wing works. Like, how to notice it during takeoff flight and during level flight. Uh, like, it is quite interesting. Okay. Yeah. So, I talked a little about aerodynamics. So, as I said, if you are interested in, like, if you want to uh, design the wing, etc., you need to know a little about aircraft, uh, aerodynamics. So uh, aerodynamics, we are like many resources are available online. NPTEL is highly recommended. Uh, there is a course by uh, IIT Kanpur uh, professors from aeronautical engineering uh, that covers basics aerodynamics. Uh, I will share the link soon. Like we'll prepare a proper document in the, uh, documentation that has a lot of details. Okay. So uh, like you can uh, do that course then there is a rec recommended book so see aerodynamics is again physics mechanics so there are bound to be a lot of formulas and initially you don't want those formulas right like i am just starting out why do i uh, want the i don't want to learn all those formulas so this is one book uh, let me just turn off that Is it visible? I don't know. Why is it not visible? Yeah, cool. So you can see this is a book, Flight Without Formula, uh, by AC. Uh, I'll, I'll again mention this uh, in in the documentation. So, uh, like this is very. Uh, this is a great book if you want to get studying because this, this will cover everything. Like, see, uh, it. If you can see, it uh, also mentions the flaps, like some things we talked about just now. Like it will introduce you to various aerodynamic concepts, like uh, 
many like uh, what is the uh, coefficient of lift things like that and best part is as the name suggests there are no formula formulas in what so uh, to get a like a understanding of uh, different terms you can actually uh, read this book okay it is highly recommended and if anyone is uh, very enthusiastic about aerodynamics good for us uh, you can read the fundamentals of aerodynamics by jd anderson uh, as i said we will cover uh, some basic uh, concepts in future workshops uh, but if you want to start right uh, like you already want to start fundamentals of aerodynamics by jd anderson is recommended <clears throat> like these recommendations uh, i am giving you like i talk to the uh, some mtech people from uh, aero, like aerospace and propulsion uh, branch and they told me that this is uh, this might be the book for you guys so uh, you can just do the flight with our formulas and be done but if you are serious about uh, like the aerodynamics part uh, this complex will be just said means you use the policy programs so uh, i'd suggest that some basic things uh, basic formulas you should know uh, this might uh, seem a little scary but uh, like you need to be when it comes to aerodynamics you need to be a little patient okay slowly you will get a hang of them and uh, it won't be that daunting later and again cfd is it's a long shot uh, we don't expect many of you to actually learn it but if you are interested or if you already know you are a genius congrats uh, like <clears throat> you can also learn about that uh, and obviously we'll try to like solve your queries yeah so now if anyone has any doubt like specifically about this this slide this slide i'm presenting right now does anyone have any doubts vedant if it's the present current it's not visible oh sorry 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 sir my bad is it visible uh yeah so does any anyone have any doubts up regarding this like if you have any queries about aerodynamics some questions i can answer uh, okay let's maybe do it later since we are uh, getting really late so as i talked like we use softwares quite a lot of them so which ones should i learn <clears throat> like as i said before majority of design process is done on computer because we want to save money and time so we don't just make a, uh, diff like we just go on making aircraft and testing them on field we when we are fairly sure that it is going to work then we test it so you uh, like you need to know some software so if you are interested in conceptual design uh, i think bds bds people might be interested in this because i uh, i saw a lot of, quite a lot of response from our design students as well so if you are interested in concept design i recommend you to learn open vsp because uh, like you can do uh, your concept sketches as well but uh, you if you, uh, you you are interested you can learn open vsp because it will help you design some rough models very quickly and easily uh, and we will show that Okay, we'll have a, a short demonstration, and we'll show how quickly you can actually make a a model. Uh, if you are and in, uh, interested in analysis, like if you want to be that guy who uh, makes sure that the plane is going to fly, who tries to reduce the drag produced by the aircraft, if you want to be that guy, uh, then you should learn VSP Aero and XLFR5. I'll discuss about this later. And those who wish to work on structural design, as I said. Uh, aircraft designing is not all about aerodynamics then you should uh, you should be familiar with cad like solid works or fusion 360 and as i said if there is some uh, hidden genius among you who is really interested you can learn st structural or fluid analysis using ansys 
I think structural analysis is an in uh, in course of mechanics people. So uh, these are some softwares like depending on upon your interest, you can learn the softwares which I mentioned. Again, any doubts? Anyone? I know it's getting late. We'll uh, we'll wrap up soon. Anyone? Any doubts? Like. If someone is confused uh, about what software he or she should learn, I can clear it. OK, never mind. So. Quick peek into some software open VSP. Open this is a blah blah blah. Uh, one important thing that a large amount of resources are available from NASA itself, okay, uh, including a library of pre made models, VSP hanger. VSP hanger, if you go on to the site of uh, Open VSP and search for VSP hanger, you can find, find uh, models of aircraft from C 130 to F 16, everything, almost everything, and also some. Uh, projects done by people. And using some common parameters, we can make a model of the aircraft and you can also export it. I don't know. OK, yeah. Then there is a uh, VSP arrow. So VSP arrow is an analytical tool used by for aerodynamic analysis and it is included inside VSP. You don't have to download it separately. It can be. Used to calculate lift, drag and various other parameters. And so stability calculator of them you don't try. And also you can visualize the pressure like how the pressure is due to the like what are we talk about etc and you even some effect of propeller is uh, visible uh, now one important thing it is not a full fledged computational the good part is it is very easy to use and it is really fast like it gives it gives solution quickly but this also means that the results are approximates and not consistent but when you are uh, are doing conceptual and preliminary or design like you don't need to be that precise so this is good for our use so demo time harsh should we uh, do the I'll demo just, or yeah, yeah 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 i'll just do it quickly now there's no time so i'll just uh, do it quickly uh, one second i'll just so listen guys uh, yeah I, I i think i'll have to stop sharing first yeah your screen is visible my screen is visible yeah 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 Okay, okay. I'm just opening uh, VSP. So guys, yeah, this is uh, just a minute. So guys, this uh, is actually the fun part. Uh, please stay a little longer. I know it is late, but just see this part. Uh, you'll get a lot of incentive about uh, learning the uh, uh, this. Okay, so yeah, guys, this is the this is the main window of Open VSP. And here on the right side, you're seeing a geometry browser. So in this geometry browser here in this section, there are all the components which you will, which you require to build a plane. Like there is a pod, there is a fusel, fuselage, there, there is wing, stack, plank. Uh, all these are very advanced ones. We'll just focus on the fuselage and the wing. Uh, by just using these two, we can design the whole plane. So if I select fuselage and if I do add, okay. So it will directly add a fuselage over here. You don't need to model anything. Everything is present in, op uh, in open VSP already. So this is the fuselage part of the plane. And uh, and now you can also add a wing to it. Like if I select wing and then I add it. So wing will be added. Uh, don't actually see all these buttons. It's quite like confusing uh, because if you're seeing open VSP for the first time, all these settings and all will be too much for you. So don't focus on that. I'll just uh, show you the demo. And we'll provide you proper links and videos of which you can see and actually practice this. It's very, very easy. Like there are only five to six videos and you can do the same thing which I'm doing right now. Okay, 
So now I added the wing. I can select the wing and I can transform it. Like I don't want to place the wing on the tip of the plane. I want it somewhere in the center. So not not in the general tab. I will go in the transform tab. And here there are tabs to actually change its location, the x location, y location, and the z location. So I'll move it a bit behind till over here. Like this seems up, uh, like proper. So now I've after I move this wing to this location. Now I want to edit this wing. So what I'll do, I'll just like don't remember what I'm doing. Like I will provide you videos and then you can practice this. Just see how like this software has so many capabilities. So just uh, like get familiar with what all you can do with this software. Okay. So time is less. I'll just move quickly. So here in the plan uh, subsection, you can actually change the span of this wing. So if I move this, automatically the span of this wing will change. If I move the chord tab, automatically the width of this wing will change. So if I move it till over here, you can see that this has actually reached a delta type of wing configuration. Yeah, but I don't want that right now. I'll just keep it like this and I'll increase the span a little bit. Okay, so I did this little bit increase in chord length. Then I can actually add uh, sections also to this wing. Uh, one second, huh? sections. Like if I want to divide this wing, so I can do a split. So if I do a split, this wing will be divided into two parts. And then I can move into that part and actually I can increase the dihedral. Like if I do this, if I uh, if I do this, you can see that it, it has reached an inverted gull type of position. If I say decrease the dihedral of this thing, you can see that it can reach a gull type of position. So I can do that also. Uh, harsh, harsh. Uh, Let's uh, uh, show them the uh, front view. Agile. Uh, it's F6, I believe. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, I just do it from the front, yeah. So this has reached a gull type of configuration, you can see. So you can do this also with your wing. I can back to this position. Now, if I want to, one second. And, and also I can rotate this to actually make a winglet also of this wing. This will this I can divide this also section into multiple parts and then I can rotate the tip of the wing into a winglet type of configuration. So yeah, you can actually experiment with, with this on your own. Like many things are possible. So now uh, yeah. the wing is also complete. Now let's add some horizontal stabilizers and some vertical stabilizers. So again, for the horizontal stabilizers, nothing much is required. I'll just add a wing again. And in the transform tab, I'll just move it to the back side of it. And in the plan, I'll decrease the span a little bit. I'll decrease the chord of the wing also. And I'll place it appropriately. So see, already the plane type of configuration is formed. Like you can see a plane in front of you. And it hardly took three to four minutes to do this. After doing this, I also want to add a vertical stabilizer. So again, I'll add a wing. And here you can see that there is a symmetry type of option. So I can switch off the symmetry, the exit symmetry. So now only I have one half of the wing. And then I can rotate this wing. I know it's too much for you guys, but just uh, stay with me. I'm just showing you the ability of this software. You can practice practice this on your own after seeing the videos which we'll share with you, okay? So again, I can change the span of the wing. I'll just reduce it a little bit. And I'll move this vertical stabilizer behind. So yeah, this is the model of the plane. We already built it. Like if you want to see some other type of shading, like here you can see the all the tessellations over here. It's in wireframe mode. So you can actually select all and you can change it to shaded mode. Like you can see different kinds of modes are also available, but let's uh, keep this wire mode only. Now this was the modeling power of this tool. Like we just saw the fuselage and the wing part. There are so many types available over here. Like you can add a prop also. You can add human body, ellipsoid, blank, anything you can do. All this you'll learn in the videos again. Like there are some basic videos also and there are some advanced videos also on these topics. So we'll share those with you. Now, this is the modeling thing. Let's go to analysis. Like if you saw VSP arrow in the presentation. So if I open VSP arrow over here, 
you can see that uh, we ha have two kind of analysis available. First one is the vortex lattice method, and second one is the panel method. Uh, because time is not there, I'll just go like I'll just explain you in simple words, and then you can actually go to from for. Uh, uh, Harsh, uh, 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 let's skip uh -huh. that part. Let's uh, just show, launch the solver, like uh, do one quick analysis, or uh, just do good. one alpha, or do it for uh, one endpoint. Alpha zero. Okay, okay. Alpha zero. Okay, okay. So if I run the solver, you can see this that there are results already generated. Like I, it just took five to six seconds to generate all the results. So here you can see the load distribution on the wing. Like uh, the red one is when there is no flow, the yellow one is when the alpha is five. And your M indicates the Mach number. So you can see that when some flow is there, the load distribution on the wing is somewhat like this. So this will actually give you the results like if the flow is uh, higher than what the wing experiences, the loads that it experiences. So you can see over here. We can again see the sweep. Here you, you can actually plot alpha with respect to load of load L by D, that is, uh, that is the lift by drag ratio. So you can see the you can analyze the lift by, by drag ratio of the plane and you can see how efficient it is. So you can do the analysis, all kind of plots you can do from here. Like you can plot a coefficient of lift, you can uh, plot many, many things, the forces, Harsh. everything you can do. Huh. Yeah, just show them the uh, the Your, result we work. Just show uh, the pressure, uh, pressure distribution. Okay, so okay. So in the launch here, you can see the plane over here. And you can actually see all the pressure distribution over here. Like everything is already calculated. You can see the trailing wakes also, like how the air will flow around this. And as you have calculated for different uh, alphas, the different flow number, uh, flow amounts, you can see from here, like the pressure is changing with the change in flow. Like there is more pressure when the flow is high. So you can see this also. And this is a very powerful uh, tool, like in the wing geometry. In the one second, I'll just move to this section. And in the sub, I can also add control surfaces. I can add control surfaces over here. So you can do this thing also. I can add controls, so I can add uh, ailerons, I can add flaps also. I can move these things around. I can do many, many things. And in VSP Arrow, then you can also uh, do analysis of if these flaps are lifted or they are in certain position. You can do that also. You can add a pro propeller over here. Like if I go to prop and then add it. Yeah, you can add a propeller also. You can change the diameter and you can do time simulation of this propeller. You can do many, many, many things. So, and then you can export this model also. Like you can export in many file formats. So, if you want to do CFD analysis properly in some tool like ANSYS, then you can do that also. So yeah, uh, this was a quick demo. Sorry guys, uh, because we didn't have time, I had to go it, go a little bit quickly. Uh, we'll share you all the resource videos, and then you can experiment it yourselves. Okay, Vedant. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, guys, like you saw how quickly you can make actually make a model. Like it doesn't take a lot of time, and that is the beauty of uh, OpenVSP. Like you can make anything. Like people have made. Uh, like Boeing 747 on VSP Aero as well. That looks very uh, identical. So you see that how powerful it is. You can not only model things quickly, but you can also get uh, analysis results very quickly. Then uh, let me share my screen. Uh, this is the last slide. Uh, just, just bear with me. Yeah. Uh, then there is uh, XLFR5. So uh, this is kind of a, the sister of uh, OpenVSP. But it is uh, it has a very additional powerful feature that is X file. So what X file uh, X file lets you do is it lets you make your own airfoil and analyze them. And another advantage is the stability analysis is much easier and results are also accurate. And, however, there is some issue with the fuselage and like it is a little difficult to learn than OpenVSP. But if you uh, like if you feel on this, this is very uh, powerful tool. Uh, I'll, I'll just uh, show you quickly. Uh, like this is the last thing. Uh, I'll just quickly show you. Uh, yeah, so can you see my entire screen? Uh, is the team's window visible, Harsh? Ah, it's visible. 
Uh, yeah. So see, uh, I have already done an analysis in XLFR5. Okay. okay. So this is si similar to uh, OpenVSP. Okay. So here, this is my uh, alpha. What's alpha? I'll talk about later. So you can see it. Uh, the pressure is changing. Red is uh, high pressure and blue is low pressure. So you can see that the pressure is changing as the uh, like angle of aircraft is changing. So this is one aspect. Now one important thing. See these plots. These plots are very uh, quite accurate and like I'll say that uh, when it comes to uh, the some some results, it is more accurate than open VSP. So you can see that uh, this is lift versus drag. So uh, what is the amount of lift produced versus the amount of drag uh, for uh, for some uh, angle of aircraft? Then there is uh, this is the lift with that angle. Then uh, you here you can see the uh, angular moment uh, angular moment like uh, the, the torque applied uh, applicable on the um, on the aircraft. So these are some additional features uh, which you don't uh, really get in open VSP. Like they are there, but uh, like they have some limitation. So that was one thing. Now see uh, that was the that uh, the aerodynamic analysis. This is the fun part, the stability analysis. So what I will do is I will uh, disturb the aircraft. Like aircraft is going uh, straight. Now I will push it kind of. Virtually, it is very fun to watch. Uh, it works. Yeah. So I hope you can see. So you can see that I had uh, like You can do stability analysis and uh, it is uh, honestly better than open VSP. So that is the reason uh, like uh, we are promoting uh, XLFR5. So uh, demo I have already done. Uh, thank you. So that's basically it for today's workshop. I know we were uh, very late, uh, but that's basically it.